so if you don't know, I was I was in uh, Capitol Hill last Thursday for right. the State of, State of the Union address. I want to start the conversation with this. This this is my conspiracy theory bag, and I can't say too much. Oh, I can't say too much. But I will say this: I was extremely confident that Donald Trump was going to become president prior to my visit to Washington, and I think a lot of CEOs at least months ago had priced in they already the stock market had already priced in a, a donald trump victory this is just my personal opinion ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. um i received some information that changed my mind i'm not I'm really not, i'm not as confident I, <laughs> 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 Come on. No, no. My mom is right now. I can't hear her. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Mama. Yes. She's like, I can't hear that. Yes, Richard. That's what he's talking about. I'm not saying I'm not saying that Biden is gonna win, but I, I did receive some information that I wasn't aware of. It's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tight race. Let's just say that. So I think, like I said, this is just my personal opinion. I think that from a market standpoint, if you if you if now if you have uncertainty, markets don't like uncertainty. They like certainty. No, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Donald Trump is going to win. Okay, at least we can price that in, and we kind of know. Okay, this is a, if you know Biden is going to win. If you don't really know who's going to win, that would that would add uncertainty to the market. Anytime there's the market, yeah. in the market, then the mark the stock market drops. That's kind of like an easy way to understand things. And I think if Biden does win a second term, then that could potentially have even more uncertainty given his health issues, different things of that have no issues. It, it cloudies the water a little bit, cloudies the water yeah. a little bit. So that may that may be that may be part of the reason for selling as well leading up to the election. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was an interesting trip to Capitol Hill. I definitely would like to thank. Uh, Representative Lauren Underwood for inviting me as her guest. And um, I got to meet with the Congressional Black Caucus. I got to meet with the head of the Democratic Committee. I got to, yeah, you know, had an introduction Sorry. to Nancy Pelosi and AOC and Representative AOC. Omar and Maxine Waters and a bunch of other people. For those that's asking why I did not meet with any Republicans, um, this is an interesting situation. So earn your leisure. We've been around for five years. We've had multiple politicians that have actually reached out to us. We've never reached out to a politician, but we, we accept invitations from anybody. We, um, in the course of five years, how many Republicans do you think has ever reached out to us? Settle zero. So I, I'm, I would love to, to speak to Republicans. I would love to interview Donald Trump. I would love to have a, a inside conversation with the Republican Party. They just haven't reached mm -hmm. out. So if they reach out, then we'll take we'll take it for sure. Um, but until then, we're gonna we're gonna entertain the conversations that um, are on our plate. So for anybody that's wondering, but I'm still a registered independent. I don't support any political party, but I do take invitations for people that invite me different places. And yeah. The invitation came from the Democratic Party, so I mean that's the that's the answer for that because I already know that that's gonna, um, you know, I already. You wearing a MAGA hat or Trump give the interview if that's his caveat? No, I can't wear the MAGA gotcha. hat, um, <laughs> but I will. I will, saw one. Will be interested. Yeah, for sure. You definitely saw one for sure. But so briefly, I just want to talk about the State of the Union because um, yes, please. It ties into the stock market. Um, you know, it's one of these things that Washington is a very interesting place and it's very important. And, um, you know, meeting with uh, Representative Underwood and she is part of she's on the chair of the uh, Appropriations Committee. So she was explaining the Appropriations Committee to me, you know, the, so in Congress, there's, there's multiple different committees. These committees are 20, 30 people. They're extremely powerful. And depending on what committee you're on you have a tremendous influence. So the Ways and Means Committee is the committee that that um, deals with taxation. They pretty much write the tax code. It's about 20, 30 people. So if you think about it, a country of 300 million people or so, 30 people really dictate taxes, right? 
But then mm -hmm. her committee is the appropriations committee. So that actually dictates where the tax money goes. So that's another like, you know, 20, 30 people committee. And I asked how much money they were responsible for deploying last year. I think it was like two point three trillion trillion dollars. So um, she was telling me about, you know, health care and uh, farmland and homeland security and a variety of different um uh, a variety of different aspects cybersecurity very very big as very far big. as the, the deployment of capital so understanding um the dynamics of washington i think is extremely important to really understanding business because they go hand in hand and yes. if you watch the speech the whole speech was talking about different financial issues whether it was homeland security that's a financial issue. Whether it was wars with Ukraine, the Ukraine Russia situation, that's a financial issue. That's billions of dollars that he's actually asking Congress to for. Whether it's um he talked about uh affordable homes, giving a grant, I think it was like five hundred dollars, something like that, a thousand dollars to everybody to try to buy a home. That's obviously a, a financial issue. So many different things that student loan, student loans, financial issue. Yeah. So everything that is actually being talked about on the political side. It all dates back to financial issues, money. And if Absolutely. you are involved in it as an investor or an entrepreneur, then you're able to actually obviously benefit from it. Right. So um, extremely enlightening um, day. As I said, I got to meet with some some people that were very um, helpful in helping me understand things a little bit further than my original understanding of things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it was something that was was definitely an eye-opening experience for yeah. sure. I, I think, uh, let, let's pull back the layers a little bit because a lot of people may have watched it on TV, don't really have an understanding of it. You were inside those chambers. I think we've, I've taken a tour inside there before, never, obviously never been to a State of the Union address, which is very rare uh, moment in time. So talk about the the atmosphere inside the room as the speech is happening, right? Like, because mostly I even have to explain it to my kids. Well, why are they clapping? Why are they not clapping? Why are they standing? Why are they not standing? Like, talk about those dynamics inside of that room. State of the Union is very similar to a hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a lot more entertaining in person than it is on TV. I've watched State of the Union. Gotcha. For years right and you know who you, know, you watch it you you doze in and off it's not really it's not the most exciting thing in the world but being there the energy is crazy because you got heckless so people on the ground they about to start fighting actually like you got the the maga people <laughs> versus the democrats they arguing with each other and each other's faces then you got random hecklers that get thrown out um people booing the president people cheering every everything every word that he says they cheering so it's like um, it's a very entertaining, it's two and a half hours. Yeah. I honestly thought that I would probably be falling asleep after the first 30 minutes, but I actually stayed up. I was very alert for the whole thing because I, it was entertaining. It was very entertaining. They take your cell phone, so you can't, you can't yeah, record no anything yeah, inside. Yeah. Um, it was, it's, a, it's one of these things that you don't have a full appreciation for until you're in it. And another thing, as far as the networking thing, um, never turn down an invitation. That's, That's a good lesson. Point. When we first got the invitation, we actually wasn't going to go because there was only one ticket and they couldn't get us two tickets. That would have been a tremendous mistake uh, because just me going opened up opportunities. Opens for, up the door. Exactly. Th this is a lesson, folks. So <laughs> never, never turn down an opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't a flip a coin thing. It was like, yo, do you want to go? Yeah, yeah, I'll go. But I wasn't feeling yeah, well. Go. go. And I, I think I texted you like 6 30 in the morning. I think I said, I texted you like, rep the set. <laughs> and he, I, it, it doesn't even need to be spoken. You did a great like, job. Go rep the set. Yeah. I want to ask you this, though. I don't know. Nobody asked you this. So, like, when you're in that chamber, right, you got to be mindful of what you're wearing, right? So, if you wear like a blue tie or a red, like, you could be synonymous with one side or the other did you think you didn't wear a tie was that intentional i didn't wear a tie um you know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think about that that's a good point yeah, that's I a good point wear, i didn't wear a tie honestly the reason why i didn't wear a tie is because i knew it was going to be a long day we started at 10 o'clock in the morning ended at 12 o'clock at night and um Damn. i get uncomfortable like with a tie for 12 hours at a time so mm. i knew from a 
comfortability standpoint, um, I I did not want to wear a tie because you know it was gonna hurt my neck. <laughs> but I also I also wanted to have some level of business casual um to it to um like fat joe everybody does it in their own way fat joe has sneakers on so that was yeah. his way of kind of you know i guess representing hip-hop culture and i just wanted to feel like you know i'm gonna still be respectful so i had a suit on i had shoes on but i went no tie mm -hmm. because um we are still you know renegades in this situation and i wanted to kind of you know rep the set do that <laughs> do that and be mindful of it but i i did i i wore blue but it wasn't for the democrat right, right right it was just that was just a did straight, that go into your mind it did not go into my mind but when i saw fat joe's tie it, it was i saw a red tie so <laughs> coming yeah, off yeah, the yeah. shoes i was like right, you wear red tie yeah, yeah, synonymous yeah. with with the republican party yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 